Hey, what's up? I'm so excited to show you macOS 15, right? 15 beta. This is beta one. I am on an external SSD. I plugged it in over here and it's running off of a Samsung T5, which is 500 gigabytes. I just formatted that with Apple APFS, then installed a bunch of the main apps that I use on a daily basis. Hey, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. Let's dig into macOS 15, the apps I use, and Xcode 16. I've got my 1Password app installed so that I have all my passwords along with um, Apple iCloud Password Sync. And I don't know if the new password stuff from Apple is going to totally replace my workflow with 1Password. Um, but that's something that I'm probably going to figure out. I think there's family sharing now, so maybe it's one thing I don't have to pay for. I don't know. I don't know if I trust all my eggs with Apple, so we'll have to see. I also have text expander. Uh, I use this one all the time. I have quick links to do stuff like what's the current date. This will put out the date in a certain format. Super useful for any links. If I want to share like a uh, app store link to the one of my apps, so super easy timer. I can just grab that link. So if I'm on a new computer or device, I can just type in a S E T that takes me right to the Mac app store. And I actually, I need to download this. So let's go ahead and download super easy timer for my computer. Then I can open it up and, Ooh, I got to recompile it. So I don't need Rosetta. Interesting. Okay. And then I have to enter my password for this one. I don't even know what my password is. Probably typed that wrong. Okay, so it's gonna install Rosetta to apparently run that because I have to rebuild this. I have a dev version that's built, but apparently I haven't rebuilt it for Apple Silicon. Another thing to add to my to-do list. All right, so there's super easy timer. We can make it small, we can make it a little bit darker. And that's my favorite timer app. So I've got super easy timer, I'll hide that. Um, what else do I use? I've got iTerm downloaded. Um, so I haven't set it up yet. I think it was asking for something, dev tools to install. I wasn't ready for that. And then I downloaded Xcode beta. Um, I've got PasteBot, but before I get to Xcode, I've also got PasteBot. So let's go to PasteBot. This is super helpful for doing multiple clips. So I can like copy this, I can copy this, I can copy this, and then I can paste those different things. So I can then choose like which one of those I want to paste and do a search. So that's super helpful. All right, so it's, and last but not least is Xcode. So I went to Xcode releases so I could manually install the beta one and I downloaded it. So I just clicked this, it downloaded, then I installed it. I had the XIP, unzipped that and went ahead and installed it. I also have ScreenFlow so that I can do screen recording. So hopefully this is recording. And now let's take a look at the latest Xcode beta. So here are the release notes. A lot of things have changed. The most notable thing that I wanted to play around with was that predictive code completion requires a Mac with Apple Silicon and 16 gigabytes of unified memory. So I am on an M3 MacBook Pro with 64 gigabytes of RAM. And I guess, sorry, this is that M3 Mac. So it's top of the line. And uh, clicking down here, you can see I'm on this beta. So this is beta one. Cool. Just clicking anything else, do anything. Okay. So that's that. So if we hide this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. We can see what Mac I'm on. Now we have Xcode beta. So right as I was installing this, I was looking to see like what's here. I could download the Vision OS and I'm going to need iOS and Mac OS. So those are the ones I'm gonna do. I'm not doing any of the development with these platforms right now. And there's a check 
box for predictive code completion. So this all runs locally. That's kind of cool. And let's go ahead and download. Okay, let's try that again. Need some admin privileges. Downloading. Um, the other thing that I did when I copied it, so after I copied, I unzipped it. If we go to applications, I like to rename them, especially for Xcode. So I renamed this to Xcode 16-beta1 so that I can identify it when there's a new beta, I can just install that one separately. All right, so I think we're good. We have Xcode, let's create a brand new project just to demo something. It's downloading. Um, so the only thing I can do right now is a Mac app. So let's go ahead and do that. Demo app. And so we have a couple different options here. I'm seeing Swift UI here, then we've got the language there, but the new thing is the testing system. So you can have none XE test or Swift testing with, oh, XE test UI test. So there's no Swift testing UI tests. Interesting. That was one of the things I was curious about if that had changed. Then we've got Swift data and core data next. And I am on a new install. So I typically will create a dev folder and then in there, I'll create a projects folder for like throwaway projects. And this, we can create a Git repository, that would be fine. Go ahead and we have to fix this. So I have to set up my GitHub. And then I want prefer rebase when pulling. If we go ahead and close that, I don't know if I have to do git init again. New git repository, hit create. And then we're supposed to have like, I don't like this. Okay, so that was one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, desktop, I thought I turned that off. desktop. Okay, so there's this click wallpaper to reveal desktop. I do not like this. I click on the desktop to like switch around stuff and focus. So I'll put that only in stage manager so it doesn't affect this. You can turn on and off items on the desktop. I actually I might not want to see anything because rarely do I actually click on any of this. I usually open up Finder to do all the work just because my desktop is so cluttered most of the time. So I might actually prefer the clean look, especially if I'm going to do any screencasts. So we'll just turn that on and we go ahead and run this. Xcode still downloading. Now there's something about it's supposed to share the build between Swift UI, so like it's the same build. So if I like run it, it's there. If we then decide we want to go with a different icon, so let's go with pencil. Then I preview it, rebuilds there. We go ahead. And I'm just going to tell it to replace. And we see it there. Um, if I change this to box and run it, box is not a valid one. It's probably like square. Let's try that again. Ooh, I need to get SF symbols. Okay, so we see square here. So now if I resume this, it's like right away without having to hopefully do a whole lot of rebuilds according to Apple. Build for preview. It says it took 0.1 seconds. 
Cool. So that is just creating a, a demo app um, in Xcode 16 with the new preview. I have the code completion model. I don't really have anything here. So if we have another view and I want to go ahead and add that up top. I don't know. I don't know. And let's set this to 20. So it's right now it's suggesting background. Okay. Whoops. Sure. Background. How do, do I have to hold the option key? For some reason it wasn't inserting that. So Okay, so there I got the background. Let's do. I'm a little confused on how I'm supposed to use this. Ta arrow key doesn't work. Tab. Tab worked. Okay, so that changed my font. Okay, so here it's actually giving me intelligent selection. So don't press enter, don't press space, you press tab and it'll do that. This didn't indent properly, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay. Cool. Um, so now I had the iOS simulator. I've got this predictive completion model and it's finishing and I, I really don't want notifications. Um, what I do like in Xcode is I do set up behaviors, but I'll talk about that in another one. So like when I have a successful build, or maybe we'll just do it right now. So the last thing that I do, I play a sound. So that's an error. I play... Play funky. And when it fails, I play that one. So new me. Um, so now if we build, we hear that. If I make an error, we hear that. That's kind of how I work. I'll probably do a different video on Xcode setup. Um, but that is working with from Mac OS 15 Sequoia with Xcode. Oh, getting all these versions mixed up. 16. So Mac OS 15 with Xcode 16, beta one. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, click the like button and I'll see you in the next video.